Welcome, everybody. So I'm recording. Welcome to Monday, April 24 meeting. Uh, so we do have a good agenda. Let me link that into the chat box so you can get in there and follow along with the meeting. So for new people, welcome. First of all, the first thing is welcome to new people. Now, let's talk about that. Uh, the agenda. So, so what we, as far as the new people, as far as the agenda goes, we have a tight program for what we're talking about. A um, couple of things before we start. Let me enlarge this. Every week, we collaborate and try to find ways to make the collaboration process better and more seamless. Part of that is tracking what you do, because if you can measure it, you can improve it. So two things that we do for the meeting for the new people. One, before you, so before you go to the meeting, do the timesheet. The, the hours that you've worked the last week and second as you finish up each week we have a section here the daily stand-up the scrum stand-up so what you see here within the within the agenda on page sorry let me let me actually share my screen here since you guys are not seeing what I'm uh, telling about okay screen shared on the agenda <clears throat> 20 minute uh, Item number five, team member progress update, scrum stand-up. That means we all, like every week, we summarize what we have done. For example, myself, uh, this is what I've done last week. Everyone has a minute to do that. So good format for that would be to definitely put in the work, work that you have done. Also, I think it's a nice thing to maybe summarize just for your own processing and thinking uh, the learnings. And maybe you can also write down what you want to learn. And then, of course, your work product links. <clears throat> the learnings is a nice thing. Like, for example, uh, it makes you reflect on what you've done. Like, for example, I, I learned to flash a bootloader onto Arduino, um, if that means anything to anybody. Cura extrusion parameters, I learned about that. I also learned that we can use Lulzbot Cura, which is this nice software, for, to adapt it completely to D3D. So a little bit of learnings. But you can share that. Feel free to, to share that. Uh, Timesheet, if you haven't, while, okay, so as we're starting here, whoever hasn't done their Scrum stand-up, please do that right now so we have it by the end of the meeting so that um, as we're going along here, we can orient everybody where everybody is because it's all about uh, people building upon each other's work and doing that effectively. So Timesheet and the Scrum stand-up, please do it. Uh, also, just like the, the technical checkpoints for for every week, uh, so development team checkpoints. Uh, if you go, let's see, development team checklist. If you go to that, couple couple of items. As people are going to be joining the team, there's going to be people in different phases of development. But but the things that we have to have, like one one thing is the OSC development page, uh, your profile. So we have a list of uh, the team members. Just to go to that. OSC developers down at the bottom here on the OSC developers page we have OSC developer bios I believe six are still missing so please fill it out so we got uh, a few people on a development team but only four there's six more that are outstanding okay hours logged on timesheet all CAD files uploaded to your log is that so uh, or documents in progress linked to your log and then Scrum stand-up page added to the meeting log. So look at this, this development team checklist before every meeting. And what I'm going to do here is a checklist. I'm going to actually add that at the very top of the document so that everyone looking at this prepared document, you can uh, find the checklist. Now, you might have questions right here. So we have a questions page within this document as well. Please use that to write your questions that you have. Like, for example, right now, um, I think one question for a lot of you might be, hey, where is this document? Where do we find this development team uh, working doc? Well, every time it's on the OSC, sorry, the D3D log page. That's the meeting log. That's for the development team since working on D3D, the 3D printer right now. Um, so, for example, if you click on Monday, April 24, this document is here. So you know that D3D meeting log is where we find this all the time. 
So we have, um, for example, Monday, April 24. That's the working document we're talking about right now. Okay, so that's orientation for how the team goes. Definitely do the questions. Do the scrum stand up so we can coordinate more effectively. Uh, that's a short time, like one minute is a very short time. And that's about it. Okay, so team numbers. Well, as far as new people joining the team, welcome to. We've got several new people. I know we have Michael joining us for the first time. I don't know if Frank is joining us this time. He was kind of busy, but he did make the team. I don't see him on the t on the, on here. And Gregory, welcome. Uh, so two active developers joining this week. That's really good. You can see our team numbers here in the graph. So we're going up, we're moving up slowly but surely here. And there's a little dip here if you look at this for today and that is because people haven't logged so please log your time I know there's more people that haven't logged their hours but you see the good progress this is this is three months time record basically since February and Emmanuel the first person on a team were growing I mean it's th been three months now it's towards it so it's February March April towards the end of April we're, we're about 10 weeks into the program we've got about uh, 11 or 12 people so our record for right now is one new person per week uh, we can do better than that okay <laughs> no I, I I definitely want to keep keep that number growing we, we kind of tentatively said that once we get our HR operations in good standing then every recruiter so we have Richard right now working with us um, but we should be getting two new people per week assuming that we go through about like say five or ten interviews per week and accepting about 25 percent of the people that we interview so uh, tell, tell all your friends okay so I'm overdue on my item number one here so item number two the product release schedule so as far as the greater picture of what we're doing so right now we're, we're pretty good on a 3d printer so this is the mini uh, d3d mini so so this weekend April 29 is our first 3d printer workshop will which will be a regular offering from now on till post scarcity is reached in other words, uh, that's going to be a regular cash flow operation for us, something that we earn revenue on a regular basis because till now we our, our revenue is pretty much irregular. Like We have these big workshops here and there, but uh, in order to plan effectively, you have to plan on a regular cash flow. So, so that's part of the strategy as far as the organization goes and hoping that people replicate. So um, that's, that's the status for this week. Uh, we know we have... Uh, a couple of people coming we have Gregory coming to the workshop um, who else I think someone else from the team is coming to the workshop as well well I forget who that is but we definitely encourage people to come to the workshop and, and actually as developers I mean what I can what I can offer you is free admission you would have to just pretty much pay for the materials uh, from now on like for people who have been on the development team for the whole development cycle um, so say you know next time we're we're developing one of the next products is say this, this CNC torch table for people who have been on that process through the development period of the three months they're definitely welcome to come to the workshop to, for free if they want to build the machine they would pay for the materials but basically if you've been involved in, in doing this work you should definitely come to the eventually come to the uh, workshop for free to, in, for the future events because you kind of earned your, paid your dues and, and helped the project a lot. And it's really good to see the thing actually being made. Okay, product release schedule. So this time it's the 3D printer. Um, as far as the general schedule for the next release, so the release is April 29, the 3D printer. July, it's the CNC torch table. So we're looking really at three-month development cycles, which means a few prototypes by that time, you know, at least some significant prototyping and using that machine. And October will be the Eco Tractor. So that's something that's very attractive for a lot of people. Um, a, a small tractor, 18 horsepower, that has a gasifier and a solar power cube. And it's remote control and it's got GPS. So this is very, very exciting and we're building a team for that. So... Uh, it's something we can get a lot of energy around. A lot of people are interested in this. 
in this eco tractor an idea is we're going down from 27 horsepower to 18 horsepower as our, as our standard for the power cube for now because the costs involved in a rep replicability talking about strategy 18 horsepower the power cube there costs three times less than a 27 horsepower power cube I mean believe get a load of that so that's why we're shifting down it's lower cost and much more manageable for people like a small 18 horsepower tractor is much more manageable as a small garden tractor is instead of the more full-size tractor but that's a very exciting project we're, we're looking forward to um, what do we mean by release so first of all we got to have the product like right now we're doing the full CAD and, and testing the product building it testing but for full release what I mean also is that we also have a workshop model that works we know that we can market it and get people to show up and build like a dozen machines like for the 3d printer we we know we can do that um, we know that the workshop model works either people show up to just have the experience or show up to make the product uh, for the release we also want a construction set set book so the th next thing some of the next things on the 3d printer is to document how do you design a 3d printer like this because now you can with the parts that we made we're testing that you can build any size shape machine we have to document that to make it very easy for people including a, a CAD workbench within plus I mean I could say for the fr for the construction set book and ebook plus free CAD dedicated workbench for making that happen free CAD is very robust and flexible we can do at the very minimum do a drag and drop design platform within FreeCAD where you drag and drop all the parts to make make the 3D printer for example um, but we should be thinking about that for every machine right so so in addition to the simple drag and drop functionality you can have some special features like like little design clues or or other assisting features within FreeCAD that let you design something very easily so and then enterprise websites. So for whatever we do, like for example with the 3D printer, I want to start a website, for example, d3d.opensourceecology.org or 3dp.opensourceecology.org, a WordPress site where we, where we do the workshops, the testimonials, the learning materials, the construction set, all the downloads, some swag, product sales, and everything else. And we should be doing that for, for all the products. And the website of course will be open source so people can replicate all the different modules from it and that's part of the distributive enterprise so that's basically it but for next time around the next workshop June I am planning on doing the six t six foot tall 3d printer which is essentially two of the 16 inch d3d stacked vertically connected using even angle irons with magnets that would actually work but talking about scaling to now just much much greater size which includes developing an open source uh, larger stepper generalized controller instead of the tiny little uh, ramps that we're using more a more generalized version so and on in, in top of the 3d printer is the print cluster so how do we actually run effectively you know like six or twelve or however many you like 3d printers at the same time now that's much bigger than just running one printer it, it means you have to have the <clears throat> networked software either like USB cables or Ethernet but um, getting towards like real part production that people can replicate and actually have that running 24 7 I want to pl I'm planning on building this pretty much like right in my house here have a room dedicated to 3d printers going 24 7 either make parts for the next workshop or for other products that we make and add to our um, basically the enterprise website so constant product development on that okay now filament extruder yes that still stands well I, I, I mentioned here BCN 3d the open source 3d printed robotic arm because you could use that for for automatic part harvesting but you, that requires some techniques that would be developed along with a print cluster filament extruder the open source Lyman extruder that still stands so so I want to get some people going on that uh, so this week we can focus on the finishing up the instructionals for D3D but right after that we can start work on the filament extruder meaning you take scrap plastic and re-extrude re it back into your uh, 3D printing filament if you click on those uh, if, if you actually go into view instead of the view here being uh, edit view if you go into the present view you can actually play these, uh, these are videos here.
Okay, so 11.15, I'm going to move right along in the schedule here. I'm a little behind. Uh, review of last week. So quickly, last week we were all doing instructionals using exploded part animations within FreeCAD, which is relatively easy to learn, but it's, it's rather hard to do the voiceover and the very correct sequence. So we have the video script for the what exactly each instructional entails and that's that's pretty much all that we were doing last week and I was prototyping here as far as the build of the D3D Mini and so forth. Uh, celebration, let's celebrate what happened so far. So I think it's it's pretty remarkable that last week for example you know for example Roberto I mean that was pretty cool to see the the first Explode Part animation fully voiceovered uh, very well done. So it's good. It's it's this collaborative technique works. So I'd like to commend all of us that we are getting these rather complex processes happening in a, in a pretty manageable way. And, and we're scaling the team so as the numbers grow we'll see how scalable that is in practice. But that means we get we have to get very strict on that all of us are following the checklist of us uploading everything and collaborating effectively. Um, so with the, along with the celebration is one one thing I want to point out. Like for example, I don't want to put uh, Jose on the spot here, but for example, um, one case study of how this works. Uh, Frank was looking for making the second part of the frame instructional. Jose, I couldn't find his uh, the the required parts on his log, so that was bottlenecked. So that's that's an example of where where we absolutely have to upload everything before you know get in the habit of it because especially when it's not finished that, that applies to the files and the working documents like Google Docs uh, just link them on your log don't just appear with it on Monday's meeting and just say here's all I have um, try to try to see if you can upload it the first thing but the idea is as we get more and more people it's gonna be tag team one person finishes something the next person needs it for their thing or it can start something else so that's why it's it's critical that we do that but anyway, I think this is going really well so far. I mean, with with what we're doing, several people now have produced the Explode Part animations, which is contributing significant amounts of work to the project. So that's really good. So I'd like to celebrate with that um, and leave it at that as, I think, job well done so far. We, we can see that definitely it works to collaborate with the open source FreeCAD in terms of uploading and downloading the file seamlessly you know someone uploads the file another person downloads and you can play the the animation right there it's great I love it and then the same has to happen with um, as we explore collaborative video editing meaning that uh, if you upload the Caden Live file and a, and a YouTube and a source video to YouTube somebody else can completely take over your video editing so say you got somewhere to you know you know, say Lashlo, he's so far on the on the axis assembly. Well, if we need to make a correction, if he uploads the source code, meaning the FreeCAD file, the YouTube video, um, and what else? Caden file, FreeCAD video, and uh, no, sorry, FreeCAD file, Caden Live source, and a YouTube upload. Those three things mainly, and then you, then the next person can download those three and edit on their desktop. So I think that's going to be really, really nice for future work because video is the most effective form of communication. So I'm proud of how we're, we're uh, starting to master the video. And I think if we can really focus on that, I mean, that's just great marketing. It's great education. It's uh, real collaborative development. So I like it. Okay. Uh, so 10 minutes on progress update. So I'd like to get everybody p piping in. Now, now you see I'm looking at the screen here. There's a bunch of empty pages for the sc scrum stand-ups, but let's go with what we have. And whoever hasn't done it, please fill it in so that we can get oriented really quickly. Otherwise, we're going to just call on you right now. So so for me, real quick, one minute, half a minute. This is what's where the D3D Mini is right now. It's built. Um, just needs the electronics connected to it. So this is, this is pretty good. And... Um, I, I like it. I mean, it's got full five by five by five print bed area, and um, I want to learn how to build a filament extruder next week. That's what I want to learn, and that, this is my product. So next person is Jose. Um, Jose, are you here? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, well, just go uh, to my standup. 
yeah yeah so so here we have um yeah jose did quite a bit of work extruder holder for the extruder so that means we can put on any extruder on our on our uh carriage like with d3d here we, we're using this very simple extruder but we can also use any other one and i was starting to look at the volcano so-called volcano nozzle which is a 1.2 millimeter aperture as opposed to this one right now has 0.4 now with three times as big aperture that's nine times the printing rate it goes as squared so we can talk about the larger printers that's good universal holder um print volume of 12 inch version okay so we don't have eight by eight by eight inch on that we're gonna work on that more it's doable we just got to reconfigure some of the parts explode frame model including magnets and angles that's good you can click on that um yeah i mean so for example with the link you can click on it download i already uh, actually i don't i don't think i have downloaded that one yet no i didn't because it was just downloaded uploaded today so here i'm gonna just open this in my as we speak here to, to show you how this workflow works you download it and you open it up on your desktop and i'm gonna double click on it and uh they're not showing the, the what you're talking about say it again they're not showing what you are talking about now you are the presentation now um no, I'm in presentation. You might might be bandwidth issues. No, I'm I'm showing. I appear to be showing my screen. I think I think we're okay. It might possibly might be your your bandwidth. Uh, you might have to change the setting on top. But I'm trying to open up the FreeCAD file. Let's see if it allows me to. Yeah, it's doing it slowly. But I've got the video recording going on, so too many things at one time. That's pretty good. Um, instructional editing in Caden Live Audio should be improved. So if we, well, actually, what we can do here, you know, let's. If I go into view present mode, uh, we should be able to play that right here. So let's try it, uh, just to show how it works. So in kind of real time, we can pretty much get this going. So let's see. That's the frame. One tw one minute twenty seven. So whoa. Oh wow. Nice. Yeah, we need to improve the sound. But yeah, look at that. That's awesome. I like it. There you might have to change the perspective because that was looked like the same piece. Keep going here. Oops, let me let me play. No, that this is really cool. I, I'm looking at it. That's exactly right. That's how you do it. Okay, let's just continue looking at this real quick. Yeah, your sound. You definitely have to improve it, but that can be worked on definitely. Uh, so a good thing that works is uh, smartphone. Yeah. Um, Okay. Yeah. No, this is pretty good. Look at that. Oh, I like that detail. JB Weld. Oh, yeah. Look at that little highlight. How'd you do that, Justin? Um, Justin. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. No, that's pretty good. I mean, that pretty much I can play that for one and a half minutes, and instead of having spending that time explaining, I mean, this is this is really good. I mean, I I can definitely use that within the workshop, and then of course we can improve the sound a little bit. But you know, it, it's it's kind of tricky in a workshop. You think like, oh, this is so easy, no problem. But if you have video documentation like that, well, for one, I'm gonna send that to everybody before the workshop. 
then people can review it and then and what I'm planning is actually handing out USBs with all the videos on them so that people have their computer and uh, everyone just, just can watch it and the workflow what I'd like to do this time I, I mentioned that already we all swarm it and work together so we don't move on to the next step until everybody is done because we found that in the last workshop there were stragglers and then it took a really long time at the end to catch everybody up because those people have to finish they want to take a working 3d printer home so so it's definitely more effective to have have everybody go at the same time because as soon as a person is done like they would be sitting around they could be helping somebody else and so that really taps the collaborative energy okay I love it uh, thanks um, we got Lashlow here so I'm gonna sh shift that up here move it right up here yeah uh, wax is with some video assembly almost ready scripts first part um, okay let's take a take a look at that on YouTube and then orthographic view instead of perspective view. yeah make sure you use perspective view it looks real orthographic looks like uh, like a child drew it but it's actually orthographic is better for manipulating but perspective looks real like orthographic looks really bad um, yeah free cat Python basic camera viewpoint setting with button whoa you did some free cat Python Oh, that uh, sounds pretty advanced. I, I've never done it. So let's take a look at your video. Yeah, sound is a little low. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, very good. I mean, that's very accurate. There's more work because that, that module has more work. So maybe we can um, help out. But yeah, no, that's <clears throat> very good. I like it. Um, okay, other people. Let's quit that. Okay, and that's... You should know that. Uh, Cedric, you want to fill us in? Let I mean, let, we got to go through everybody to see where everybody's at. Uh, yes. Hello? Yep, go ahead. Uh, yes, I have finished. No, I, I, the last week I finished the, the instruction for mounting the two extruders with uh, the slides. So this week I mm -hmm. challenged to, to do it with the video. I finished it, but I, I, I have until, until now, I have a video of uh, 1 minute 30. Mm -hmm. So I am trying, I am, I don't know, I am trying to cut it in four, yeah. in three parts. Yeah. Be before up up uploading it to, 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 to YouTube. But uh, there is one thing that, that, I want to be sure with it. Yeah. Okay. You said that you, you said that you uh, in the uh, in the instruction for doing the video, I I saw that uh, the pass should be uh, fifty seconds. Yeah. Is it exact? Yeah. I mean, you should get it as close to that as possible. So that means the the main point there is eliminate all dead space. Is the idea? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. So that should that should be doable. Because I am seeing that uh, uh, mm, so, so if I see that it, it in, if if I see that it is uh, too long, I will cut it yeah. in many parts of of, of uh, fifteen seconds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, okay. the the idea is do the best you can. I mean, that's you know you have to practice your voice and redo it many times. I mean, that's when I read it and just yes. without any space. That's how long it took me. That's why I put that time there. But the idea is for everybody. Like uh, we've got uh, slide number three. Um, the definition of done here is that you have 
up to so first is you know we wrote the script we did the explosions in FreeCAD, then we did the videos and the yeah. final thing is that you upload all the source code to the uh, to your wiki so if you you know whatever you end up with if if all your source code if if the Caden Live file the FreeCAD file and the video source yes. is there on YouTube meaning the download like before you edit it just the stuff you started working with as one file then we can make improvements to it so so that's the whole beauty I mean we haven't really tag team on the videos yet I mean we've still got to do that but I want to make sure we're setting ourselves up for that as a possibility so that's very important for everybody on this this meeting here and uh, yeah so continue on that let's see like for example uh, you know, if you look at Cedric like did you upload those files for example or the, the, the files of uh, no you didn't the video. yeah no, you gotta do that. No, so, no, like, no, I didn't upload it. Yeah. So, so yeah. If you do that, we can help you. And that's the idea. Like, for example, if we have a bunch of, you know, say we have developed our documentation team. I mean, in the future, we probably will have people who are, maybe like focusing on videos or other documentation or publishing the book and and stuff like that. So we we're building a team. But the point is, if you have that uploaded, then someone can take it and just work on it. In fact, a good way to involve, you know how we have the development team right now, um, but a way to tag team even better is to have ad hoc developers, because a lot of people can't commit the 10 hours per week. But we, if we document and have those files, like everything that's ready to be worked on on everybody's log, then we can actually send people to do little ad hoc tasks. Like, okay, we've got this video at the state, we need to cut it down by 20 seconds to make you know take out all the dead space. Well, that would be a great task for somebody who is on an ad hoc team, because there's a lot of people that want to work with us. But right now, like we don't have the energy to just manage everybody. Like I want to work with you guys closely because you're putting in all this time. So, but as we grow, we're gonna have all these other energies that are contributing. So we, that's why I just want to emphasize the, the concept of uploading and everything else. So I think, uh, okay, that's good enough for now. Let's, let's move on to the next person. I have a question on this one, though. Why is it that when I downloaded this and, and I go to, so this is Jose, right? Uh, why is it that if I go to Exploded Assembly and I press on the play, nothing happens? I'm trying to press play here. Yeah, I wrote that. I wrote that uh model the explorer assembly not uh, done properly because I just need to explore the assembly the animation for, for the video. Okay so, so this doesn't have it. You know what I mean? Okay so this this one is not the file that's that's animated. It's not animated because I I, I thought of the animation just to, for the video but then I, I found out that you wanted also uh, to manipulate the file, right? And, uh, yeah. That needs to be done. I, I wrote it down in my log. That yeah, yeah. No, that's right. Uh, I think as as this thing is playing, I mean, the very nice thing about FreeCAD here is you can switch things around. You can zoom in while it's playing. You can even, like, hide and, you know, as it's playing, you can hide and unhide things. You know, like, you know, say it's playing. You can be doing a lot of things, like hiding things, unhiding things. Um, you know, so, yeah, so you can get very creative. Now it's uh, organized in the steps of assembly. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. That's that's very good. So yeah, let's keep going here. So other people. Um, so before we start getting into task division, let's hear more from other people. So we got Cedric, Emmanuel. He's um, okay. Uh, for for yeah. me, I I I added the the. the the sensor, the sensor yeah. holder. Right. That's fair. Right, right. I I want to be sure. Is it? It is also a M sixteen extruder. M. Is it the same? So it is the same sensor. Sensor of. Yeah, 
the heat the, sensor the pusher extruder that we have made it should be the same part is it the same uh, uh, sensor uh right that's the exactly because i just use i, I just use the the, the 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 sensor that i, I right. have built yeah for the pusher extruder i just use it to the old extruder yep that's right for the old it, extruder and use i i i modified the the the, 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 the holder the sensor holder because it's right right no i understand that adapted to the old one right no that's right that's it's the same one so we're we're gonna move to another extruder pretty soon from the very simple one so we can print all kinds of materials like polycarbonate and rubber and everything else the current very simple extruder that you know, like the, the the version one here and this one is very simple mka that can pretty much do polycarb not, sorry um pla and abs we can't do other yeah. other stuff so yeah, but the same sense actually don't show the sensor here. The sensor is not mounted, but the sensor is going to be the same for this version and the next version, and the holder is going to be the same. That's a good thing. We just replace okay. this extruder part here. But see, this is what you the kind of stuff you're asking right now. I mean, that's the perfect kind of stuff. I forgot to mention we've got the 3D printer network that opens. Oh, sorry, I, I got to go back there. Network that opens open source ecology.org. Um, that's the kind of questions you want to be asking at the network, for example. So, so we can cover all of that kind of stuff. I haven't seen you there much, but yeah, 3D printer development at network.opensourceecology.org. Whoever's new, please get in there and use that as a regular place to to post. So yeah, I see some new posts here, but all the development questions and everything else we can ask there, and then everybody else can help. So that the meetings were pretty much going through. Okay, here's our Scrum stand up, and then we're uh, doling out tasks and we can communicate throughout the week on on the network there and then possibly set up some other meetings where we have some specific training meetings set up throughout the week as well and I have to get that's why I wanted to I was talking to Richard about uh, yeah like getting some people that can help us on some of the technical issues getting them to do little presentations during the meeting um, or during other sessions outside of the meeting but anyway so let's let's keep moving since we got a bunch more people. So uh, next person who wants to report next, who um, my thing here seems to be a little locked up here. Who wants to speak next? Uh, I'm gonna close down some of these windows. Uh, anyone next? So that's a three D printer development. I guess I can go. Okay, who is that? <clears throat> Speak up. Go ahead. Hello. Yep. Go ahead. Chaz, go ahead. Go ahead, Chaz. Chaz, can you hear us? Go ahead. Okay. So um, I have been working on the assembly of the universal axis motor. Yeah, I was a bit stuck on the um, on the animation part, so I've got like a few questions on that. Um, I've been yeah. busy with uh, my final exam, which I have passed. So, all right, my degree soon. Yes. All right. Um, as far as um, the animation part, if I look back at my free kid example, um, I just need to like get more familiarized with like the using this the exploded assembly interface. I'm just not able to like figure it out so far. Haven't had the time yet, but I, yeah. I should have all this time this week now that I'm done with the exams. Okay, that sounds good. So, we, so I'm, I'm probably gonna post a few questions like after this meeting. Yeah. As far as like, um, trying to, like um, like for examples or tutorials or like um, what uh, tutorials or examples did um, people use to um, educate themselves on how to right the exploded well in a meeting like the only thing that i showed was some links from the i think you should probably review the meeting agenda for where we started working on it because i think we want there were some links to different 
different uh, tutorials there. So I think you should take a look at that. Look at the past meetings, which are all recorded on a D3D me meeting log or D3D log page. So that was the 10th, I think, that we, st yeah, that's when we started on that. And there should be some notes in there regarding how to do that. But yeah, I think that the good thing is, like Cedric, for example, uh, Chaz, anybody, do the 3D printer development group. Feel free to use that, like put all your questions there. I look at that all the time. Um, so that, and besides, you want to leave a paper trail for, for in the future, people learning about the same issues. So please do that. Um, okay, next person. Does that sound good? Good enough, Chaz? Yeah. Okay, next person. So, Jean Baptiste, maybe? I think you're the last one left. JB, can you speak? Trouble with the mic. Okay. Uh, you want to report on, let's see, what do you got to report on here? Let's see. Um, there's Roberto. Um, yeah. Jean-Baptiste, your page there, if you want to put in your stuff on the, on the page, uh, please report on it. Um, update the assembly animation video. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, Roberto, you, you want to just pipe in real quick? Let's see. Uh, I want to link, click on your, let me share the screen again here. I want to see the, see we've got something going on here. So free CAD file. Let's just take a look at that. The heated bed. Uh, let's take a look at what the heated bed is doing. You want to tell us about it? I'm opening it up right now, so I want to see more what that looks like. Um, yeah, Roberto, we can't hear you if you're speaking. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, there's uh, some kits that I have seen in the art library. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see what we got here. Let's see if that works here. Oh, look at that. All right. So that's what I downloaded. What's going on here? That was the heated bed? Oh, let's see. Huh? Oh, okay, okay. That is the first part of the heated bed. I thought it was part of the axis, but that's how the heated bed looks like without the platform. That's the thing that supports the uh, the heated bed. Uh, so actually, if you rotate this like that, the heated bed sits on t on on this. Oh, sorry, I didn't recognize that. But yeah, um, that's pretty good. And the cool thing is I can play that here and it it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, once again, very simple. Um, so maybe, um, do you want to go through the questions right now, or maybe like I would suggest you just post it on the OSC network. Can you do that? Yes. I can. Okay, yeah. let's do that. So we move on right to this because I want to go and organize everybody around what's happening here with um, the overall slide number three. So if everyone wants to go there. But as far as anyone else here, we've got, um, let's see, Richard left here, Gregory's new to us, um, I think pretty much everyone else went. Gregory, so how are you doing there? Can you hear us? And Any thoughts right now? Anything to add in? We, we're going to start talking. Yeah, Hello. hi. Um, nice to meet everyone. Nice uh, to meet you. Based here in Austin. Um, background is more of software development side, but mm -hmm. moving more into the open source hardware realm. Yeah. Um, and also really interested in how the organization has evolved over time. So probably one of the things I'll be able to contribute is that I have mm -hmm. some background with Python. And yeah. So I'll be looking pretty closely at what all we can do with FreeCAD with that piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Well, Just, uh, nice yeah. Yeah, Gregory. Thank you. Um, for the Python work, I mean, <clears throat> one thing we might want to start talking about, and 
we'll see. Um, I think for now, if we can direct you straight to the animations, because there's a bunch of different modules still left. I mean, I think we can do that. But as I talked about the FreeCAD construction set, um, yeah, if you can help us on beginning the construction set where basically after we have all the parts, we put them into a 3D printer workbench. So basically creating a workbench within FreeCAD that would allow us to do that. That's probably something that uh, that would definitely be worthwhile. I mean, the first step on that is simply um, making FreeCAD able to, when you upload the workbench, it has all our parts and you can drag and drop design with some features that, yeah, like the step number one is just drag and drop design, design work. So you're pulling the parts um, to make pr 3D printers of all sizes. And maybe it, it allows you to do things like, oh, now I want to, you know, say that the frame is parametric or anything else is parametric so we can reshape and resize things as needed and maybe write some scripts that that allow you to generate all the correct parts. Yeah, like, like uh, Gregory, I'm thinking because everything is parametric within FreeCAD, you can, you know, hit a button to to create this size of a frame or, you know, and it will scale all the parts accordingly to meet that frame or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, there's plenty plenty of things we can do on that to uh, to make that happen yep so yeah 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 let's do that so we can get on that but as far as um, let's let's look at this so this is the critical for now so we Friday Friday is game day uh, so Gregory's actually coming to the workshop but uh, where are we on instructional so looks like um, so idler side assuming is done carriage side a little more work so if John Baptiste you could you could uh, continue I think Chaz I think you said you, you're good to go on that you can study up stuff a little bit but just look at how other people did stuff um, download their files and see if you can track what they did I mean the the basic instructionals from two weeks ago are very quick to learn there's just very basics that you need to know and then you can go further from there um, let's see Abe Abe's working on the x-axis assembly uh, I guess we don't have Abe on a call right now we can check in on that what I'll do is I'll follow up with an email to everybody just basically trying to coordinate everybody and focus everybody on okay use the development network actively so all your issues like we're really like pulling this last week before Saturday Saturday is the build day but uh, by Friday night I guess Friday night what I'll do is I'll take all the videos that have been created and I'm gonna put them on USB sticks so that we can uh, have them for everybody doing the workshop right now we've got I think we've got like 16 people but the number of builds is um, it's actually eight eight or nine as far as the number of builds we still have a couple of spots left and then some couple more people were still still supposed to sign up but at least uh at least eight builds somewhere between eight and twelve builds that we're going to be doing so i need to make up those usbs with all the videos um for friday night so let's communicate on the development network there let's see heated bed so that started frame jose i think is doing well on that extruder animation that would be great yeah so now there's more parts that we haven't touched so yeah I think everyone's pretty much busy let's see maybe what we can do um, Gregory I'd like to see how I can involve you so Gregory and Michael I know you guys are joining up um, let's see right now it seems like Abe is the perhaps needs more like the axis that's just a little piece but here the the things that are very important is how you actually put the axes together so both X Y and Z um, I don't know my first first impulse would be to say Gregory if you can take a look at Abe's log and just download his stuff and communicate with him and see where he's at uh, we've got the emails that are sent out I'll send up a follow-up email for everybody encouraging everybody to coordinate but I think uh, Gregory we, we should try to get you on this at least on part two we're basically taking from where he is 
and try like the pair pair thing like how how well does the coordination like quick rapid back and forth coordination work with two people let's let's see how how that could work i would put you right there gregory um on part two with abe so that's the entire axis assembly not just the individual parts of the axis which are above there so i'm pretty confident about these these above but these are the main ones so abe lashlo uh gregory uh we want to continue on that. and maybe michael i'm gonna see if um uh, michael can help out here if we can coordinate that uh michael's not here right now but you're supposed to join this meeting um so those those two major things and as far as the then the, at the end the final final assembly um i think the belt tightening it's probably a video i can do pretty quickly here that's that's that that's actually pretty complicated i, I need to probably do that um so let's say i'm gonna just highlight these in red so we can allocate them but which are some of the critical critical ones uh, basically once everything is done what i would suggest as an experiment is somebody well it depends on the state of the final assembly if the final assembly right now which i believe uh, emmanuel did that for the 16 inch version uh, if that is well organized doing the exploded part animations there would be relatively straightforward but for there definitely like the overall script is needed like i really i think i should probably do that and what i'll do is i'll do that after the meeting and then um with that script in place whoever finishes up anything on their parts they can go to that script and everybody basically swarm that like the final assembly of what what axes go what things are put on in what order so some of the other things like the magnets electronics wiring and so forth uh, i think we're too late in the game i think what we can do right now is the final assembly what i'll do is produce the script for that so let me just highlight that and then whoever's finished start nibbling at it and that's where the absolute do something upload log everything continuously is absolutely critical because only that way can people actually build upon each other's work so in principle like once we have a full team like you can really divide something into very very tiny parts and put it all together in very rapid time so that's what we're getting towards the fact that with the immediate uploads and and you know at the end of the day it's going to have to be some some kind of a cloud mechanism where whatever you're doing it gets automated automatically uploaded to um to the cloud so whenever somebody goes there the first step you do is is you download something you just say okay pull this from the repository and then you start working so everything that you do you go up to the cloud immediately instead of like on a wiki which you have to you know manually download we're going to automate that in the future but for now we just uh diligently upload things and do that so i think that's probably all we can say for now regarding um where we at on the work and i'll follow up with an email to try to coordinate everybody but yes please just go to the development network page and upload your stuff and log it carefully okay so let's see the last thing so in the agenda here i want to keep to the time here um questions page so we have the questions page uh so that's the teamworks assignment i think we've got that solved questions page let's go to that and then suggestions um any questions suggestions suggestions were yep yeah, so that's a little suggestion right there you can read that to, for perspective view do everything in a perspective view not orthographic view by the way that's a big hint okay questions so cedric yeah so so i cedric i have a question for you actually and that is the the prusa i3 mk2 extruder so that the thing that we're going to do next which is the more universal extruder we're going to need a full bom so well first you got to do your uh, assembly videos but after that um get to the bom i don't know how much you've done on that but i think leave that for now but uh, make sure that happens later just put that on your your task log okay yeah I have the links of, of the, 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 
bats, I, I will put it. Yeah, so you know the you know the link for the BOM. So um, you can put it there. Yep. So Jose, Scrummy not working, not being used. That's yeah, we kinda let it go. Replication of content in the meetings, Google Slides and the log documentation. It takes some time to document here and there. Can we learn this a little bit? Simplify it. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, what we can do is uh, with a question like that, we can do very specific action points as far as what to do. Um, the Scrummy we haven't used. Uh, so actually, I have a, I have a, I have a suggestion on that one, Richard. So I asked Richard instead of working remotely on the HR to get closer with us. Maybe, maybe Richard could do it. But I mean, the, look, the deal is we need a process manager. We don't have one. Like I'm trying to do all this stuff, prepare the meeting agenda and stuff like that, doing all the other stuff. So we need bodies, but I would say for now, the only person I can relegate it to, it's either all of us. I mean, it's like, you know, the only solution to that is use it <laughs> or, you know, have some person kind of manage it. But let's see if, I mean, if Richard, um, but, uh, the thing is, can I, can I just, uh, say my opinion on this? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, this is good. That's, this is critical. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the thing is that, uh, uh it's the, the, the standoff session is working very good because you document things you can open it in a presentation you can see the links as well yeah uh, and then we are basically writing that again that uh, again in the in the log document in the week yeah. which takes time also as well okay and the scrummy you use it when you are centered you are centering your process around the scrum board which is not our case so uh, it's like a, a lot of channels to talk yeah. about the same thing and and I think that for us it's working very well, the presentation, because they are okay. at the end of our meeting, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I think I, I would I would monitor that and really evaluate if we should uh, remove or, you know, remain leaner. Uh, and really figure out what is the best practice for, for okay. the channel Okay. Well, uh, the thing we do to that is to try it. So why don't we try this? Um, we have the scrum scrum stand up pages on a document why don't we make sure that hmm see that's kind of tricky because i always go through the logs um i would say emphasize that you definitely get the scrummy like this this week meeting like this is where we coordinate everybody's work so i think it's it's important to see everything in one place uh i would say Encourage people to use the Scrum Stand Up more. Like, emphasize that. Make sure you have that. Because, like, right now, all those pages are blank. That could be the place where we do it all. Uh, how does that sound? Would people do it? Yeah, the thing is that people are will not document on the log and then write the things here because it's really very uncomfortable. I tell you because I've tried to do the three things. Put the scrumming, down the, the log thing and do this uh, in, a, in a high quality. And it took yeah. me like uh, one hour and a half or more, you know? Right. So I would, yeah, I would I would think more about it and I would definitely go for something simpler. Like like what we're doing now. Because okay. here we can put the videos, we can put the links to the, to the, to the files in the OC wiki. We can do it, and, and we don't need like the two tracks of our progress. You know, now we're having two tracks of our progress here. Okay. And, uh, okay. So what if we do the stand up, document all your stuff there, and then for wiki, just free cut files and any other stuff you don't want to put on a stand so basically divide the content you're gonna put up like either choose the stand up or the wiki so you definitely have to do the wiki for files because that's where we upload the files and then for the scrum stand up you can just simply link to them on the wiki how's that sound yeah, exactly uh, static, uh, static information on the wiki and then our dynamic information we put it in the, in the uh, the presentation stand-ups okay yep let's try that let's try to be more diligent on that so presentation stand-up for dynamic stuff yeah let's see how it works so people uh, listen to this that's a that's a good thing yeah I, I do see this this uh, replication of work and then 
<clears throat> yeah, yeah. I do like the idea. I mean, I you know, for example, I use a scrum board, but it's kind of irregular. And I put like various tasks that are there just for like long term. Like if someone joined the team and they said they were going to do something, I put it up there in a scrum task log. So, but maybe like for now, don't don't worry about the scrum task board because you really have to rearrange it and work it like every week and we just don't have the people. I'm hoping that as we get more people, oh, we actually need to have somebody managing that because it gets too complex. We'll see what happens. But for now, let's do the... Let's do this. Just the wiki, upload your files, use the Scrum per this presentation here to make sure that everybody knows what you're doing. And then all the development questions, uh, basically dev questions go to the, uh, the network. Yeah, does that sound good? Let's, let's try that. Okay, so let's do that. I'm gonna put that in red. Let's try that process and keep making the road by walking here. Okay. Um, Roberto, is Brian working on a heated bed too? No, Robert, uh, Roberto, no. Brian, uh, he actually left the team because he didn't think FreeCAD was, was adequate for our purposes. So we're all, all alone on that, but that's, that's okay. So let me, is Brian's name still there somewhere? No, no, no. Okay, sorry about that. Remove that. So he's actually officially off the team. Um, so that'll be just yourself. Mm -hmm. So continue on that and, and post any questions you have. Okay, uh, great question. Easy solution. <laughs> okay, last one. Should assembly videos have a subtitle for YouTube videos which can be translated later to any language, maybe automatically? Yeah, that'll be a good idea, actually. Um, but doesn't don't subtitles happen automatically? Like I believe, what happens if you speak clearly enough, the subtitles happen automatically, don't they? So the answer to that is yes, because we want to be um, universal for all the languages. Um, if you can do it, please do. Uh, not a high priority for the first meeting, but it's definitely something as we roll out to the world. This will be more important. So I hope that answers the question. Um, and that's it so let's wrap up then going back to the agenda uh, anyone have any other final comments or questions it's 1 p.m. Uh, it's noon time noon 03 so we're okay suggestions uh, what's working etc okay I think we're gonna wrap up if if um, nobody has a comment I actually was gonna say um, the suggestions and comments try to put everything in here like you know for example instead of me asking okay what what else do we have like put that in the questions so so we're more effective okay so assuming we wrote down all the questions in the comment section two four six eight I'm seeing nine people on this uh, hangout hangouts takes only ten so we're actually gonna do um, we're looking at using Jitsi or some other open source solution. Uh, we've got a guy looking at that right now, but we're going to have to get a, a, a presentation platform like Hangouts that takes more than 10 people because we're over 10 people already. So we might be cutting some people out. Uh, so we're working on that. But besides that, uh, to wrap up this meeting, game day is Saturday. Uh, we need to put all the energy into the instructionals production because that means uh, the work, the build day, is going to take us take us shorter. Uh, hopefully, we finish by, you know, I think the optimal scenario would be realistic. Optimal is 6 p.m. If we don't, you know, but maybe like it will go on until 8 p.m. If we're really like messing stuff up, stuff's not working, not enough clarity. We'll like end up at midnight for the last person to finish <laughs> or whatever. But hopefully with the swarming on a build with everybody building together, we eliminate the po even the possibility of the midnight run at that point. I'm really hoping that six to eight, we've got everybody finished using the technique that as soon as anyone's done, they swarm on to help the next person. So literally the last person that's doing something, they've got like 
16 people around them trying to help them out fighting for space to help them so that's that way we can really accelerate um, the build and I think that's a really nice idea because the idea still is that you can scale this kind of a build event with logistics to like a stadium no limits if you have good instructionals good design we should be able to build a stadium full of um, these 3d printers if we get a stadium full of people um, that's actually what I'm gonna try to shoot for I'm looking at like a hundred person event for the end of December like end of this year see if we can pull that off in a major US city like San Francisco possibly New York uh, San Francisco is better there's more programmers there who want 3d printers in New York there's too many hardware people they already have 3d printers there anyway that's a that's a thought uh, but with that said yeah so let's coordinate as close as we can on um, on I'm gonna follow up with the email put all the all the questions in the dev development network upload all your stuff and let's see what we can do for this week and then we'll start working on other directions like the the main ex the main development we're gonna add is gonna be the extruder uh, the filament extruder which is gonna be critical once we build larger printers where we are we're gonna need to have our own filament because otherwise it would be too expensive to print larger objects because remember our goal is print things like fence posts plastic lumber anything like furniture right now we need some fittings for the water system in a CD eco home things like that so we can do a lot of different stuff the polycarbonate glazing all kinds of stuff um, gutters I mean aquaponics towers gutters everything I mean there's the the world is made of metal ceramic and plastic and biomass that's literally what the the world is made of so plastics are are like a quarter of uh, current society they're like a quarter of civilization so they're quite important it's especially if you do bioplastics so and we want to do this all solar so we're running off solar power and things like that so make it more ecological and with the recycling of plastic that means we're churning our garbage into the print, printing filament so it's that's exciting uh, I think with that said, I think we're going to quit here. We're at 12.07. We're good to go. Uh, put all the questions on the OSC Development Network. Network.opensourceecology.org. So thanks a lot, everybody, and we'll we'll see you soon. Feel free, really, to put all the questions up there. Keep that discussion going. I really want to emphasize just the continuous discussion back and forth because it's all about mid-course correction. You really got to go through this iteratively back and forth a lot of times until you get it right. And uh, that's what we want to do. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you soon.